What's up guys, Mark Smith, JBS Training Group. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, cheek risers and optic heights. There seems to be some misconception out there about what guys that are running higher mounts and cheek risers are trying to accomplish. Uh, I've seen a lot of comments like, hey, doesn't putting the, the cheek riser on your stock defeat the purpose of the high mount, you know, and all this kind of stuff. So I want to kind of get into why high mounts and then why cheek risers with high mounts and kind of walk through kind of what's going on with that. So first thing I think we need to understand is the standard height, 154 traditional conventional scope mounting height. Um, so it is what it is for a reason. And it's basically where most people in the world can rest their cheek, get a good solid cheek weld up into that jaw or that, uh, that cheekbone there with their stock and get behind the optic perfectly every time, right? It's a consistency point. So, uh, this this SR25 here with a 154 Badger mount and the sloping uh, cheek pieces of the Magpul stock allow me to every time I mount it get in the same spot every time. Right. Well, sometimes we want to raise our stocks or our uh, scope mounts up. Right. To so something similar to this 1.7 uh, or 193 or 204 or you know uh, Unity just came out with like a freaking three inch one or something, I don't know, it's really high. Um, the, the problem with, with the high mounts is, uh, or that, that can present itself, is when we're shooting at things that are a long way away or at things that are very tiny. Um, there is something within uh, every optic system that's known as parallax. And I think we need to kind of understand parallax before we can talk about what we're doing with cheek risers and optic heights. So parallax is this visual phenomenon that occurs when We've got a, a focal plane that is the target and a focal plane that is the reticle. So it's very similar to what we see with uh, front sights and rear sights and targets on uh, iron sighted pistols. So you hear this front sight focus, front sight focus, right? Well, that's because the human eye can't focus on more than one focal plane at a time, right? Insert the red dot on the handgun, right? Great invention. So parallax is simply, if I'm looking at the target and the reticle and everything's perfect, and I shift my head, right? That's what happens. Shift it the other way, that's what happens, right? So this is happening inside the optic itself. We mitigate that by having optics that have what they call parallax adjustment. Um, I, I don't think it should be called that. I think it should be called more of a focal adjustment. So when I'm rolling this, this parallax adjustment, what's happening is, is it's moving the image inside the optic back and forth to put it on the same focal plane as the reticle and it's doing that so that it can kind of mitigate the uh, the parallax that's that's uh, happening so the easiest way to mitigate parallax with optics that don't have that option such as lpvos is to make sure that our head is perfectly centered behind the optic uh, every time we're going to shoot so i need the reticle center of the tube i need my head or my eyeball rather center of the optic cheek weld provides us that consistently without having to think about it when we get up in the 193 and even some of the 17, uh, definitely in the 24 or the 204 height mounts, we go from a cheek weld to more of a jaw weld, right? You'll see dudes running them like this. The issue with that becomes that I cannot con consistently hit the same spot every time without having this tilt motion going on, right? And that's moving the reticle inside the optic. Now, what happens is guys will get on their guns, they'll get right, and they'll send it because they can see the reticle on the target through the scope. They're not taking into account the fact that the reticle's not center of the scope, the image is pushed to the right or left, we've got a little scope shadow creeping in, things like that. They don't pay attention to that because they're focused on what they're doing, which is shooting the target. And we were, we're missing targets you know, by a foot at 400 yards, 500 yards, because we're shifting the reticle inside the tube. Cheek weld mitigates this. So, if I want to run a 170 mount or a 193 mount, something like that, I want to do that so that my neck angle changes from this to more of this, right? I'm, I'm coming up and I'm relieving the stress of the, of the neck muscles. And it's just easier because I'm no longer looking out the top of my eye sockets. I'm looking out of my, my eye or the, the way they're designed, right? To look straight out. That's what we're trying to accomplish by raising that up. It also helps with dots and things of that nature for, you know, uh, passive night vision use, stuff like that. But overall, it's just more comfortable to pick your head up like you always do and then how you walk around. So 
we put the cheek risers on the stocks of the guns that we're lifting the optics on so that we can get that cheek weld even though our neck is not in a craned in position, right? So even though this is a 170, I've put a 0.25 or a quarter inch cheek riser on the stock. So I went from a 154 to a 17 mount, okay? So I've gained 0.16 height uh, of optic there and I've gone 0.25 high on my cheek riser. So that allows me to lay in on my cheek and still see through this optic. So it allows me the consistency that a standard configuration would give me. So guys that are out there running cheek risers with higher, higher mounts, that's uh, hopefully why they're doing it. I hope they know why they're doing it. Um, but the idea is not to run a higher mount so you can get up off of the stock. The idea is to run a higher mount so that the neck angle changes from this to this to this, whatever you're doing, right? I want, if possible, to keep that, that cheek weld as I'm coming up. So that's where the cheek riser comes into play. So just wanted to kind of clear that up for you guys. Um, other than that, that's what I got for today. Rock and roll, jbstraininggroup.com. Mark Smith, see you guys.